I was recently helping my friend fix up this old house that he bought, and after helping him fix it up, I just have one question. Who thought wallpaper was a good idea? <laughs> Who thought putting up wallpaper in the last 50 years was a good idea? Like, what generation was it? Was it my parents or my grandparents? Because I just need to know who to be mad at. Who put up all this wallpaper? Like, who in the 80s or the 60s or whatever built a brand new house? Like, yeah, we're going to paint the walls, you know, eggshell white, maybe a sky blue. And someone said, I have an idea, honey. Why don't we put a giant sticker on the wall? Well, that would be beautiful. <laughs> Just a bunch of diagonal roses. Won't that look super pretty in the kitchen? No. It's awful. Like, I'm, I'm like I, got, I seriously think like my parents put up wallpaper just to prank the millennium. Oh, God. <laughs> They're going to be ripping their fingernails off in 50 years taking this stuff down. <laughs> wallpaper with oranges and like a star pattern. Like, oh, that's going to be terrible. Like, you guys could have, you could have just drew on the wall with Sharpie. <laughs> you can paint over Sharpie, and that's perfectly fine. You can't paint over wallpaper. Well, you can, and you do, and they did, and that's how they did it. And that is the worst. These fingernails, these fingernails. Uh, there were some kids in my uh, old neighborhood, and they were breaking into homes and vandalizing houses and like stealing stuff and doing all that. And I said, well, at least I didn't put up any wallpaper. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Some little devil worshiping, satanic 15 year old boy <laughs> running through the neighborhood with a giant bowl of wallpaper. Just plastering your walls with wallpaper. Like you get home at night, you walk in your kitchen and it's just paisley wallpaper. Oh, <laughs> Here. This was just a decoy. Like, you guys are all here, but when you get home, you're going to realize it. <laughs> I got it. Uh, so I got to make fun of myself. Uh, I'm 31 years old, and I left the bed until I was 12 years old. I'm not making that. You're laughing at me, not with me. I left the bed until I was 12. Like, I wish I was exaggerating to make that joke more funny. I'm also not bragging or anything, but I wet the bed until I was 12 years old. And uh, one of the worst things about just wetting the bed, other than the urine, obviously, <laughs> is the title, you're a bed wet. Like, it almost sounds like something cool. Like, oh, you're a golfer, you're a ball player, you're a bed wet. <laughs> yeah, I'm so good at peeing my pants, I can do it in my sleep, <laughs> the bed, the worst is staying the night at your friend's house. Because you pee, then you pee your pants at your own house on your parents' park, but that's one thing. Man. You pee on your friend's couch, like, drop out of high school right there. <laughs> drop out of school right there, but that's going to follow you to high school. Like, it's over for you. Get homeschooled. Or just, just plain drop out. So uh, what I would do is, when I was staying the night at my friend's house, I would wait till we're all, you know, we're watching Ren and Stimpy, drinking Surge, and then uh, I would go into the bathroom and put on my pull-ups, not diapers, because I was a big boy, they were pull-ups. <laughs> and I would, and then, and then, and then, and then when I would put it on, but the walk from the bathroom to the sleeping bag would kind of be like strategic, because it just sounded like newspapers drinking in the pants. You know? <laughs> Like, I'm walking back all slow, and they hear like a crinkle, like, John, do you have, are you wearing a diaper? I'm like, no, that's the New York Times. <laughs> the OJ trial, you want to update on what's going on? <laughs> that's an old reference. Uh, to me and my friends, we like to do, we like to go camping. And I realized from going camping, I cannot intentionally create a fire. Like, I cannot intentionally catch wood on fire. Give me the gasoline, give me the lighter, give me the oxygen, give me everything. Like, I cannot create a fire. But I leave one cigarette lit at my parents' house. We're all moving out of the Why is it so hard to start a campfire when entire apartment complexes have burned down because someone forgot to blow out a Yankee candle? Like, why? <laughs> like I'm dumping gasoline on the dry wood, and I'm just like, 
can. Like, guys, we're not, we're not cold. We're gonna eat cold hot dogs tonight. Like, we, can't, <laughs> we can't create this fire in a tire part. Someone like has lost their house because they forgot to take like lint out of the dryer. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's gone. so next time I go camping, I'm gonna bring my own fire starting kit. I'm gonna bring some carpet, a couch, wallpaper, anything, anything that catches on fire really easily. And then I'm gonna waterproof my house. I'm gonna lay a bunch of wet logs over there. Those things never catch fire. <laughs> you, ever throw, you ever camping with like your dad and your grandpa and you throw like wet logs on the fire and then he just beats you with the wood? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That's what they do too. Uh, am I the only person that finds it ironic that the TV show The Simpsons predicts the future, but Futurama does not? <laughs> right? Like Matt Grading is like he thinks he's pulling a fast one, but not on me. Like I'm on to him. Like I'm on to his backwards game. All right? Like not. I'm on to his uh, his trickery. I've, uh, I've had a lot of jobs in my day, and uh, I've never understood how come at every job I've ever had, the higher up a man is in a company, the fatter his gut gets. Like, yeah. you've never had a skinny boss, ever. Like, he always comes over, shirt tucked in to compliment the gut, to exude the gut. Like, all right, guys. <laughs> Put that on the shelf, all right? And it's like, they say fat is just stored energy. Not if you're a CEO, your, fat, your gut is just like a third testicle. Like this, is where, <laughs> this is where Papa stores all the authority right here. You're going to do what I tell you to do. Uh, so one of my friends, uh, he, he made me mad when he said, Man, this is just me, but one of my friends is like, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about getting my new job. I'm really excited, but, but I'm worried. I'm worried because my health insurance doesn't overlap. And for one week, I won't have health insurance. I said, bro, you don't even skateboard. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen to you? You're going to compete in the X Games that way? You're like, you're, you're going to go to backflip or something? You're going to kind of grind a handrail? Like, no. Like, you're just going to stock shelves at Walmart and play video games in your parents' basement. <laughs> My generation, we don't need health insurance right now. We need health insurance 20 years from now. We're all dropping like flies from energy drinks and great babies. Yeah. Going. <laughs> that is when we're going to need health insurance, all right? When you develop some new form of cancer that has no research behind it because you've been puffing liquid into your lungs with flavoring, that's when you need health insurance. Yeah. Not right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I like it how old, like, Greek and Egyptian statues are always, like, real big, and, you know, it's always, like, a guy flexing, or it's, like, like a beautiful woman. She may be nude, but it's, like, not in a sexual way. It's, like, it's these great statues that are up thousands of years later. I just imagine, like, what about, like, America did that? Like, just George Washington flexing naked. Like, oh, that would be, it would be odd for the White House, but, I mean, they could just put that little leaf over him to come up with it. And we totally get away with it, or just like Egyptian statues of like half man, half horse, or whatever. And I just imagine a statue like half turkey with the head of Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> that would look very, that would look very silly. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, I have a list, but I like having a list, but I think having a list is a good thing. I think if you don't have a list, you're the one that talks funny, not me, right? All right, I'm 31 years old, I'm gonna have this list forever, okay? I'm not gonna wake up 41 and I can pronounce my S's and my TH's correctly. No, I'll be an old man with this list, just yelling at my grandkids, Susie, Stephanie, step off the slip and slide. <laughs> I like to date girls that also have a list. Because every time we get to an argument, it just sounds like two sprinklers are fighting. <laughs> <laughs> My friend comes over, why is this wall all like saturated? You got pain? Take down the wallpaper and paint. Like, no, me and Sammy got this really big fight earlier. It's a big deal. I have a list, I try to avoid certain words, uh, like the process of the sun's rays that come down and makes plants grow. <laughs> Grade. 
away so we know what we're talking about. <laughs> But uh, one time, uh, this, this guy was, you know, making fun of me for having a lisp, and he's like, oh, you know, you, you talk like a wuss, that lisp, and all this other stuff. I was like, yo, I'm proud to have this lisp. I'm glad to have this lisp. In seventh grade, my science teacher made me write a thesis paper about photosynthesis. What? <laughs> Someone was like, oh, really, John? 